the future, I cannot tell you anything about it, because no one knows what the future will bring us. I think we are, as designers, also enough agile to respond to what is about to come up, to not to lock ourselves into visions for 20 years or something like that. When you read a science magazine from the 70s, it's, it's wonderful, you know. By the year 2013, we all fly around in saucers and, you know, uh, we can read each other's thoughts and things like that. And none of it has become true. So it makes no sense to talk about the future here if you want to understand the future a little bit. So I decided to go 15 years back in time and show you a little bit of what um, lighting designers have done over the past decade and how that always has been inspired and made possible because of technology. Because light is really a marriage of technology, design, art, a good deep understanding of mankind also. We wanted it to be a wave of light symbolizing with a strong symbolic meaning. A bridge is not just a structure. A bridge connects people. A bridge connects the whole countryside with a big city or something like that. So we wanted it to be a wave of energy and the idea was born very easily. Let's create light that lights up that face of the bridge and let it change color starting in the city and then reaching out to the countryside. And then the bridge, you know, I turn on the lights one by one now, so you see how it's built up. Eh? There is the, there's the bridge, the spine, which is concrete and steel. There's the deck of the road. The lights are on already for the cars. And then there is the underside of the deck, which are sort of like recesses, cassettes, soffits. And so these lights go on on the spine, and then the underside of the spine gets a different color to be able to read the volume, you know, so you get the depth and then we add more contrast and you see that this, the underside turns on. And here you get to see almost how it is in its final sort of quiet mode, if you like. Huh? So that there is this, there's this side illuminated. And if you look very carefully, you see a little bit how the light is distributed, but then there's the underside in a contrasting color. So you get a real sense of depth. It's an extension to an existing museum. It uh, catches the daylight here, as you can see. Huh? It, it's open to the north, and it's close to everywhere else. So there's no moving parts in the daylight control system, even though you want to dim it significantly over there, but you still would like to enjoy the modulation of the daylight in the space. Well, from the top view, it looks actually very simple. 1,000 uh, circles. Uh, all the daylight shaders and uh, we also had to develop this yellow bit here because that is where we mix it. We mix the light to make it completely diffuse. And we also have a lens here which takes away uh, some of the intensity actually. So, you know, he said, why don't we dress that building? Why don't we come up with something that uh, is a sort of transformative skin? And it turned out in daytime to look like this. Uh, which looks very like, much like metal, but actually it is glass. It is just how it reflects. And then this was the final result. And it could transform very slowly to something like this. You know. <coughs> or it could become something like this, which is not what we wanted, but the client was really excited about it. <laughs> they, they somehow cracked the password of our computer system. <laughs> I don't know. And this is in Abu Dhabi, it's a hotel. It's also the Formula One racing circuit here. It goes here under the building with the race cars. It's pretty amazing. What you can see here is that, we, that the integration and also the, the technical and engineering of the light is really taken to another level. A rendering of the result and another option because it's full color. We can change any uh, light panel, any color. And then the mock-up, the first prototype, if you like. And then the final result seen from behind. And here is the interface to control all of that. Yeah? So we were sitting on the street in Korea, you just saw it, and where we had to type code every number of every disk and then assign a value to it for color and for a brightness. Just a few years later at Jas Marina, we could select with the mouse a number of panels in this interface 
and like in Photoshop, pick a color and apply it. So it became incredibly easy from this project onwards um, to create content for your lighting schemes. And that has changed everything again. Because it took for the manufacturer of this software a project like this to do it. You know what I mean? They would not have developed this interface if that project would not have been there. So there is a much deeper understanding now of how different colors of light have effect on, different, on the growth of plants. And the growth of plants can be promoted um, using specific colors of light. This man, he grows orchids, for example, and he, he gets help from the industry finding the right wavelengths to make his orchids grow stronger and healthier. And it's quite amazing that lighting designers also tap into that. And I shortly want to say something about OLED. You're going to see in the exhibition some OLED, which is, uh, I think, a wonderful new quality of light because it's a surface that lights, it's not a point. It makes it really soft and forgiving. And this is what you can do with it. Uh, costumes uh, for artists. This is Fergie of Black Eyed Peas. Here you can see a little bit more of that. There is, again, a lot of experimentation going on. Technology is really inspiring the designers. You can use it as artworks, in this case commissioned by Aston Martin, the car maker, or you can make architecture with it, in this case a system that allows you to create whole ceilings out of these OLEDs. Um, or you can play with it, as you can see, when you attach a camera to the wall and you read out the movements of, uh, of the guy, you can translate these into brightnesses here. So I think there is a lot to come in the field of OLED. Uh, I think there's a fantastic exhibit in Lightopia where you can learn, uh, learn really how they are being made by the industry at this time. I think it's going to be much more simple to make them, which makes them available to more people, and designers can do more with it. After that, maybe light comes that does not need any electricity, not from the sun, from the wind, and certainly not from um, traditional power sources. This lamp is not yet very bright, but it is bacteria in a liquid that glow. So these are luminous organisms, and the way they are being fed is through these tubes with methane. And methane is a gas that can be produced out of human waste, as you probably know. So you imagine that the, the cycle that is being explored now of waste feeding bacteria, making light for us. And you can see here the scale of this object. This is a real working model. Uh, the girl is a little bit dark, but here you can see her head, so you get a sense of these bubbles. And that is perhaps a, a view uh, into the future. I want to thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.